Hey, good morning. Welcome. I'm Andy Lee. This is the Bite of Bread. It's weekly nourishment for your soul. This is the morning edition. Sometimes I'm on at night. This week, though, I was able to come on this morning, but I hope my morning friends can join me today. Bring your coffee. I've got my Wonder Woman mug. Hey, Brian and Eva and Amy. Good to see y'all. So glad you could join me. And Carol, come on in. We are going to be digging into Ruth. We are on the 10th week. Um, we are using my Bible study on the book of Ruth. It's the keyword Bible study, a 31-day journey to hope and promise. Don't worry, if you don't have the book, um, you can go to my website, wordsbyandylee.com, and there I have a printable um, with the scriptures and with some prompts for you to use um, that goes along with the book, but you get more out of it if you have the book too. Anyway, so glad you could join me today. We're going to be talking about breaking the rules. Oh, Jen, good to see you. So glad you could come today. Hey, yeah. So we're going to be talking about breaking the rules, which I know even writing that, that title um, for Facebook here saying that we're going to talk about breaking the rules. It just takes my breath away because I am a rule follower. It's like against the rules for me to break the rules, but this is so exciting and I, I just love scripture and how it comes to life when we see how human the biblical characters are and we're going to see how Ruth broke the rules and how it was a good thing that she did. So hold my hands and I'm going to pray us up and get us ready for what God has for us today. I see Emily has come on. Good to see you this morning. So hold my hands. Father, thank you so much for your goodness, your kindness, your mercy. Lord, thank you that you love us. I pray for anyone out there who does not know how valued and cherished and loved they are. By you, I pray that something in this teaching today, the scripture would stir that up and they would be able to receive that. Lord, help us learn today, reveal new places to us, Lord, of, of um, where we haven't known the truth so the truth can set us free. Lord, we love you and praise you. It's in Jesus' name and all God's people said, Amen. Beth Francis came on. So good to see you, Eva. It is good to see you too. And I'm looking forward to August. I'm going to get to teach a little workshop at a writer's conference in August. It's called the North Georgia Christian Writer's Conference. You can go to wordweavers.com and find out more about word weavers. If you are a writer, if you know God is giving you a story, you need to check it out. Okay, hey Lori, good to see you. Don't you love summer? I love summer. It was my intent to do a morning and an evening during the summer. It's not worked out, but here we are this morning. And next week I'll be um, on on Tuesday morning because I have company, so thank you for working, you know, being flexible with me in my schedule in the summer, which is kind of crazy. So let's go to Ruth 2, 5 through 10, and that's where we're going to hang out um, today. It's getting exciting, guys. It's getting exciting. Second chapter of Ruth, we've met Boaz. He's walked into the fields we know that the harvest is here, the famine is over, and we've gone through the grief, the, the pain of losing um, Elimelech and, and Naomi's sons, and here we are, back in Bethlehem. The harvest is coming, or is here, and Boaz has walked in the scene, so it's getting exciting. Hey, Kirsten, good to see you, and Emily, good morning. Okay, so Ruth 2, 5 through 10, if you've got your Bible, well, you can read along with me. It says, Boaz, ask the foreman. Okay, let me just tell you, let me go back up. So Ruth has decided she is tired of sitting on her hands, and she's going, no, I kind of add a little bit to what it really says, but she's tired of sitting on her hands. They're starving. She needs to do something so she says to Naomi, I'm going to go glean in the fields. Is that okay? And Naomi says, go ahead, 
go do what you need to do because yeah but she has no hope in her at all so Ruth goes and she just happens to go into walk into the correct field the field of Boaz and, and he is a relative um, of Naomi's. Dun, dun, dun. It's really important to remember that he's a relative. We also learned that he's a man of great standing. He's a man of Kail is the Hebrew word which means strength and wisdom and and wealth and a just man of influence and so he's a really good guy so she just happened and that was McRae destiny destiny had it that she would just walk into that field and we know what that destiny was was God himself was directing her into the correct field that day and so she had been working and Boaz has, has come up on the scene he's come from Bethlehem verse 5 it says Boaz asked the foreman of his harvesters whose young woman is that and the foreman replied well she is the Moabites who came back from Moab with Naomi she said please let me clean and gather among the sheaves behind the harvesters she went into the field and has worked steadily from morning till now except for a short rest in the shelter so Boaz said to Ruth my daughter, listen to me. Don't go and glean in another field and don't go away from here. Stay here with my servant girls. Watch the field where the men are harvesting and follow along after the girls. I have told the men not to touch you. And whenever you are thirsty, go and get a drink from the water jars the men have filled. At this, at this, my friends, verse 10 she bowed she bowed down with her face to the ground she exclaimed why have i found such favor in your eyes that you notice me a foreigner okay so we're gonna stop there oh isn't that just a precious scene just exciting wonderful sweet scene we're, we're going to dig into it now and look at the different verses and what's happened now this is really important and maybe something that you we we just read things so quickly and we know a story so well that we don't think of some of the the details but so the law allowed for foreigners and widows and those who who were poor to to um, harvest or to try to glean in the fields around the perimeter of the field that the farmers could not harvest the entire field they had to leave the perimeters full so that those who were poor the widows the foreigners could could go get um, the barley and the wheat from the perimeters now do you did you notice where Ruth asked to go no she did ask she didn't just try to go sneak in there and look like everybody else and and you know follow behind them she did ask but what did she ask for she asked to where go in the middle right behind the harvester she asked to glean in the field itself now I have this feeling that if she would have been in the perimeters where she was supposed to be where the rules said she was supposed to be hey Eric and Wooster I have a feeling that she she wouldn't have been noticed by Boaz but because she was where she was because she had asked to be in the middle to be in the field to be gleaning behind the harvesters he he saw her he was like hmm who's that who's that young woman who's in there I, I wonder if she you know looked differently if different if she um if she had different clothes on if she looked like she was from Moab because anyway he knew she wasn't one of his harvesters and so he recognizes her so that was I I just think you know I don't know if she didn't know the rules if she did and she was just so bold I love this Ruth is bold Ruth is brave she is courageous she breaks the rules but she does ask she says please 
We all teach our children to say please. Please can go a long way, right? Please and thank you. So she asked, please may I be in the, in this, in the field itself behind the harvesters. And she, she has favor with them, right? So that the um, foreman has allowed it. And now Boaz, learning more about um, Ruth and who she is and what she's done, he extends this chesed and this kindness to her. I love in verse 8, go, go, go to verse 8 with me. Boaz says to Ruth, listen to the words, my daughter, listen to me, my daughter. Now, he could have said to her, hey, woman, or you young girl, or you foreigner, you know, but no, he, he greets her with this term, daughter, my daughter. I think it's, uh, it's endearing. It, by saying daughter, he is showing acceptance. He's accepting her. He's given her grace. And if you read what he does, he's giving her protection. I mean, this is a big thing because he doesn't know her from anybody. But he knows that she's connected with Naomi, and he knows what she's done for Naomi. And so he says, my daughter, listen to me. Don't glean in any of the field, and don't go away from here. Stay here with my servant girls. And, um, and then he says, if you're thirsty, then get something to drink. So he's provided protection for her. He says, you don't let any of the men hurt you. I've told them to leave you alone. He's protecting her. He's accepted her. He's given her grace and protection. Now, Jesus also called to a woman and called her daughter in one of my other favorite stories of the Bible. And if you want to look with me, if you got your Bible, turn to Luke 8, 42-49. We're going to look at this story where Jesus calls someone daughter to, you know, the story of Ruth is a story of redemption, and Boaz is a type of Jesus. He's a type of Christ. So I want us to go to Luke 8, 42-49, and let's read this story really quick. It's about the, the woman who was bleeding for 12 years. I'm sure you're, many of you are familiar with that. Hey, Rebecca, good to see you. I'm so glad you could join me this morning. Okay, so Luke... 8, 42 through 49. Do you want to read that with me? I'm still getting there. There we go. Um, there, I got it. Do you got it? Okay. So Luke 8, 42. Hmm. Okay, well, we may have to read the whole thing. Now, when Jesus returned, starting in verse 40, a crowd welcomed him. For they were all expecting him. Then a man named Jairus, a ruler of the synagogue, came and fell at his feet, pleading with him to come to his house, because his only daughter, a girl of about twelve, was dying. And as Jesus was on his way, the crowds almost crushed him. And a woman was there who had been subject to bleeding for twelve years, but no one could heal her. She came up behind him and touched the edge of his cloak and immediately her bleeding stopped who touched me Jesus asked when they all denied it Peter said master the people are crowding around you and pressing against you but Jesus said someone touched me I know that power has gone out from me and then the woman seeing that she could not go unnoticed came trembling and fell at the feet, at his feet. In the presence of all the people, she told why she had touched him and how she had been instantly healed. And then he said to her, this is verse 48, Daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace. Oh, don't you love that story? I love this story. This woman also broke the rules. She was un. Clean. Anytime a woman had her menstrual cycle, she was unclean. She couldn't go into the synagogue and worship. She couldn't sit on the same um, pew, see, bench, whatever, with somebody else. 
or slept with somebody else. They were unclean. They couldn't be touched and they couldn't touch. This woman has been like this for 12 years. So for 12 years, she's been ostracized from her family, her community, her, her, her church or synagogue. She hasn't been able to worship. And so she's desperate. I'm sure she's desperate because emotionally, but also physically, to be bleeding for 12 years, she is desperate. She's trying everything. So she's breaking the rules because she says, forget this. I'm just going to, I just know if I can just touch him, if I can just get close enough to him, I will be healed. Look at this great faith that she has so she broke the rules and when she reached out and she touched Jesus our Bible says it's cloak right but I got my prayer shawl for you guys today more than likely it was his prayer shawl that he had on and she more than likely reached up and touched the edge of his prayer shawl and the edge of the prayer shawls have tassels the tassels are called zitzits, and they have they have um, knots in them. See the knots? Can you see the knots? Well, the knots represent the law and the laws. And so the Jewish men, even today, who wear their their prayer shawls, um, the corners are called the kenef, and they're also like known as the wings. See the wings? So Malachi says that the Messiah would come and there will be healing in his wings. So she reaches up and she touches, she touches more than likely one of these tassels. And the moment she does, she is healed completely. I love the fact that Jesus had probably spent many hours with his prayer shawl, praying to the Father, holding on to this tassel to the zit zit where all of the the laws and the remembering all the commands of god that that is what she touched when she was healed and and healing was in his wings as she touched him it's a beautiful story and what does jesus say to her he could have said woman because he does that once in a while right to other women or he says her name no he says to her daughter which is very important because again it's that acceptance that love she broke the rule she was desperate she touched his prayer shawl but there was healing in his wings and she was healed instantly why did jesus call her out have you ever wondered about that why didn't jesus just let her run away you know go away slip in the crowd not be known why do you think he called her out i think he called her out because he wanted her to know the truth that he loved her, that God loved her, that she was a beloved daughter of the king. He loved her, that she was valued. She was important. She was important enough for him to stop his busy, he's busy, he's trying to go save another child, another daughter, which is, you know, not ironic because this is God's story, but but he stops because she's valuable and she's loved. And she, he, I think he wanted her to know she belonged to the family. She was part of the family of God. So Boaz did the same thing for Ruth. When he reaches out to her and he says to her, Daughter, this is what I want you to do. You keep on reaping in this field. Don't go into another field. I told the guys to leave you alone. And when you're thirsty, you can get a drink of water. Go back with me to Ruth 10. And let's look at her reaction. Because her reaction is so very important. And really, that's what I focused on in my article on my website. It's wordsbyindylee.com. I talked about her humility and how that humility... Um, what gave way to favor. She has such favor. And really, his kindness made her even more humble. But look at this in verse 10. It says, At this, she bowed down with her face to the ground. She exclaimed, Why have I found such favor in your eyes that you notice me, a foreigner? Now, that word foreigner is noker, N-O-K-I-Y-R. I'm not sure if I probably 
botched up how to say that, but the Hebrew word foreigner means someone who doesn't belong there, an alien, somebody who's come in um, and they know that they, they shouldn't be there. But she says, he calls her daughter, she calls herself a foreigner and she's bowed down face to the ground, humbled, I believe, humbled by his kindness and his generosity and his openness, this, this grace, this cussed that he's given her. I wanted to read a little bit from my from my um by my book, the Bible study. If you have it, I'm on page ninety five, reading this uh, this little part here. Ruth seemed to have this humble confidence. She was strong and wavering. Yet thinking back on today's lesson, I'm struck with the thought that Boaz's kindness and acceptance humbled her. She knew her place. She knew she didn't belong. But his kindness set her on her knees, her face to the ground. Has anyone's kindness humbled you? As a boy as this, did Ruth. Have you ever experienced that? Someone's just so kind, gone above and beyond, and it's just so humbling, right? Can I, I just want to say she accepted. She could have said, oh, no, that's okay. Thank you. This is enough for today. I'll go in somebody else's field. I I'm really bad about that. But she accepted every gift. You'll see as we, we go through this study, she always accepts everything that he offers um, to give her. She always accepts. So I like to always connect. It's really important that we connect the Old Testament with the New. That we connect the New Testament with the Old. They go together. And so in the, in the study, we have a connecting with other scripture section of the lesson and this, um, this connection is with Titus 3, 1 through 2, really 1 through 7. So turn with me to Titus. This is the last we're going to look at, the last scripture we're going to look at today. Titus 3, 1 through 7. So remind the people to be subject to rulers and to authorities and to be obedient and to be ready to do whatever is good, to slander no one, to be peaceable and considerate, and to show true humility toward all men. Does that sound like something Ruth has done? I think so. At one time, we too were foolish, disobedient, deceived, and enslaved by all kinds of passions and pleasures. We lived in malice and envy, being hated and hating one another. But look at this, verse 4. This is where I want to go. But when the kindness and the love of God our Savior appeared, He saved us. Not because of the righteous things we had done, but because of his mercy. He saved us through the washing of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us generously through Jesus Christ our Savior, so that having been justified by his grace, we might become heirs, daughters, having the hope of eternal life. Now that's a big old chunk of scripture that I just read, but what an exciting promise. What a, you know, his promises are a sure thing. We read this and it's a yes and an amen and it's done. It's a done deal. It's been done. The kindness of God, verse 4, but when the kindness and the love of God our Savior appeared, of course it appeared in Jesus Christ. When he showed up on the scene, that was God incarnate. That was all of the kindness of God, all of the love of God, all of the mercy, all the grace of God, all wrapped up in one man, full of God and fully man. So that word kindness, it's, it's an interesting word, is Christos. And Christos, this is Greek, and it means the softening or the mellowing. It's a gentleness. And so I, I just love that. It's the, the gentleness when this softening, this mellowing, this gentleness, when this kind of love from God appeared. And that word love 
is like philanthropy. It's where we get the word philanthropy, right? So when there's a gentle softening of God and his philanthropy came in Jesus Christ, our Savior, when it showed up, he saved us. Now, this is the word I really want us to focus on, saved. So saved in the Greek is sozo, and it does it can mean deliver, um, it, it can mean rescue, but it also has this meaning of wholeness, being whole. How cool is that? So we get so focused on being saved for eternity that we miss out on the whole aspect and important part that he came to make us whole, to make us complete, to heal us and make us whole here and now. Before we get there, when we get there, we'll be really completely whole. But we're in process, right? As we say yes to Jesus, so it can be my king and sit on the throne in my heart, then Holy Spirit comes in and Holy Spirit starts working and he starts making this whole. We're changed, we're saved, we're healed, we're made whole from the inside out by the power of the Holy Spirit. You know, I think the enemy has done such a good job of messing up our understanding of the Holy Spirit. The church has been divided by the Holy Spirit. We've been afraid of the Holy Spirit, but the Holy Spirit is the difference maker. It is the key. Holy Spirit is what comes in and and gives us that crestos, that softening, that mellowing, that fruits of the Spirit of love and joy and peace and patience and kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. Holy Spirit is what comes in and makes us whole and complete and heals us and with the Holy Spirit, we are heirs, we are daughters of the King. Oh, somebody give me an amen and amen. You know, sometimes you have to break the rules. Ruth did, the woman in Luke did, who was bleeding, and they did so humbly, they did so asking, um, and they did so and received favor from the Lord. So just chew on that today, chew on how the guy goes to such great lengths for us to know um, that we are his, that we are valued, and he wants the best for us. He wants to make us whole and complete. Hold my hands. Let me pray you up. Thank you, Jesus, for this word today. Thank you, Father, for the story of Ruth and how Boaz treats her and how that just shows us and reminds us and is just a demonstration of your kindness, your love, your generosity, your wisdom. Oh, Lord, that we would be bold and brave like Ruth, but that we would be humble, that we would be um, hardworking, and that we would have those characteristics that, that she has, God. And we just thank you. We bow our face to the ground. And we say thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Fill us up. Make us whole from the inside out. It's in Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. I'm so excited to be back for at least this morning and next week for a morning too. I've missed all my morning peeps. Go out there. Be a threat to the enemy. As you walk as a daughter of the king, as you walk humbly but confident, and let the Holy Spirit fill you and make you whole and from the inside out. I'll see you next Tuesday morning. I'll be back next Tuesday morning. I know that's weird. You'll have to put it on your calendar because that's totally not when we've been doing this at all. But next Tuesday morning, this is because I have family coming in from Oklahoma next week. And you know me, when I have family coming in, I'm focused. i got to be focused on them. So I hope you can join me. We will be on day 11. If you're interested in the Bible study, it's on sale right now on cbd.com. So $10, $10.50, I think. We'll be on day 11, page 99. You can go to wordsbyindylee.com. On Sunday, there'll be a new article, a new Buy the Bread reading plan, and an imprintable that you can just get for free. You know, not even an email address. So thank you so much for joining me. Love you guys.
Kim says, yes, 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 I miss you. Kim, good to see y'all. Have a great day. Have a happy 4th of July. Be safe. Enjoy family and friends and enjoy our freedom. We are so blessed. Bye.